Uh, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to uh, my name is Andrea Castillo. I'm a librarian at Beatley Central Library in Alexandria. And welcome to tonight's program, Aging in Place, Do Not Blame the House. We are joined tonight by uh, George Mason University Associate Professor uh, Patrice Winter. And I will uh, give the floor to her so she can introduce herself and get things started for us. Dr. Winter. Thank you very much, Andrea. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your evening to come and listen a little bit to me. Um, a little bit of history. Um, I've had a promotion since, so I'm now an assistant professor. In my advanced age last year, they gave me a promotion. So um, I am, um, I'm originally a physical therapist. So most of the speaking that I do on behalf of Mason speakers has to do with some physical therapy um, ideas. And um, I've been, Mason is my encore career. So I've been teaching at Mason for about 12 years, but I've been a physical therapist for over 40. Um, and so I enjoy doing these, uh, keeping my fingers in the, the, the physical therapy end of things. So um, I can, attest to a lot of what I will be talking about because I've been going through it myself. And um, so to share some things. So you might have lived in the same house forever, or, you know, just you've been in it a few years, but it seems to be changing. And I, I what I would like to invite you to do is that the walls, the halls aren't getting longer and the walls aren't getting narrower and the light isn't getting dimmer. It's just that we are changing and it's a time to be embraced um, that, we're, that we are here, that we've made it this far, but the idea of making it safe and making us safe um, so that we can stay as uh, high functioning and as active as possible for as long as possible. So I'd like to, you know, just a couple things on the idea of aging and changes that are normal. Things that our body, you know, you look in the mirror and you kind of remember what, you know, your, your graduation picture. And you can say, yeah, I kind of sort of look like that. And I feel just like that, but we know that our bodies have, are changing. Um, and so I want a few things that are normal. Okay. So when you are 20, when we were 20, the pupils in your eyes, you know, so the black part of your eye, a little kid comes up to you and, you know, big eyes and look at, and you just see black. You don't see very much color. And if you look at our eyes now, you mostly see color. You see just a little bit of black in the middle. So that pupil opens and closes depending on how much light is available for sight, okay? So at age 20, your pupil, when you go into a dark room, opens to eight millimeters. And when you go out into the bright sun, it closes to four millimeters. So wrap your head around eight to four, okay? At age 60, it opens to four four and closes to three, okay? So you got eight to four, four to three, okay? At age 80, it opens to 2.8 and closes to 2.5, okay? So it's not opening and closing very much. And it's almost a quarter the size of what a 20 year old will open and close, okay? It's normal, okay? Besides throwing in cataracts and glaucoma and all that other stuff. Let's just look at the normal stuff that happens, okay? So case in point in your house, for you to see the same thing a 20 year old can see, you need three times the amount of light. So working with the house, you need night lights 
everywhere, anywhere that you might be walking in the night, you need a nightlight. And they got these really, you know, inexpensive ones at Home Depot where you can get, you know, a pack of three for 10 bucks. Okay. So for the house, you can go and spend 10 bucks on nightlights or the average hip replacement because of a fracture is now pushing like a hundred grand. I go for the 10 bucks, you know, it just light, you need light. Ergo, you get up in the middle of the night and you go into the bathroom and you flick on the light and it's like, whoa, bright, okay? So you get in your body kind of gets used to it. But then going back into the bedroom, you turn out the light and you can't see a blessed thing because that bright light through that little bitty hole is trapped in your eyeball, in essence. So you're blinded when that light goes out. There you go. The night light. Make sure you have a really good night light in the bathroom so you don't have to turn on the bright light. You're able to see pretty well with that night light. So you got one outside the bathroom, you got one inside the bathroom so that the dog drops something, you know, you drop your shirt after you, while you're getting your night clothes on and you forget to pick it up, you'll be able to see a shadow that there's something in the way and you don't trip over, okay? So lighting, you got to light up your light, okay? So the bathroom, night lights, um, kitchen, light in the kitchen. Um, again, a relatively inexpensive thing is to get the little sticky lights that you can put under the counter because you need direct light onto what you're counting, what you're going to cut. And chicken legs and thumbs are the same, you know, they're, 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 they're shaped the same. You don't want to cut the wrong thing. Okay. So lights, three times the amount of light that you would normally want to do, but it's going to keep your, you're going to, it's going to keep you informed as to what your surroundings or happening in your surroundings and where you want to go. And if there's something in the way and you're going to be able to see, okay. Same idea out driving this, um, a, a short aside. But driving at night, you should think about it. If you're like, I'm pushing 70. I don't like to drive at night because I can't see as well. And if I go out, I make sure that I only am on streets with really bright lights. Same thing. I need three times the amount of light to see with some, what one of my students that I teach needs, okay? Those eyeballs are just not opening and closing as much, okay? But they're still opening and closing, so you need to respect them, okay? So light in your eyes is really, really important. Um, the idea of, um, okay, I'm just gonna go over my little list. I've got, I, and, and let me go over it and then we'll put it up, you know, so that I need you to listen rather than, you know, it's writing frantically. So it's the teacher in me, sorry. Um, so there, I've got like three groups of things that are like inexpensive to do that will help with safety around the house, medium, so they cost something and then stuff that's pretty ticket, high ticket, okay? So. First thing after all of the night lights and the under counter lighting and the lighting in the closet and any place that you think you need light, invest, okay? It's cheaper than medical bills, okay? So one thing that I have done, uh, well, the house I moved into has hand railings on both sides of the stairs, which is really cool. 
Um, so going up and going down, if I got something in one hand, I got, I got my hand on the stairs because we're not as agile. We're not as strong, um, you know, stock and feet slide. So, you know, be careful that way. Um, and so hand railings on both sides is a good investment, okay? Inside and out, okay? So even out your outside steps, if you only have it on one side, invest, put money on the end and put hand railings on both sides, okay? Grab bars in the bathroom, okay? So I moved into my townhouse and there were grab bars, but the, the, they, it needed new tiles. So um, my guy came and he, you know, Kenny took the, the, the tiles and everything out. And he goes, you know, Patrice, it's a good thing you didn't fall or you didn't need that grab the, the grab rails because they weren't in the studs. That could be a problem, okay? So make sure that if you are putting in grab bars in the bathroom and it's really nice, you get soap in your eyes and you get a little off balance, the grab bars there, let me tell you, it's a good thing. So um, have good grab bars installed. So one getting in to the bathtub on one side and one on the long wall, it's very helpful. Okay, get rid of your throw rugs. They're too easy to trip on. You know, if you got that really special, special little rug that you've had forever, put it somewhere that you can admire it, that you don't have to trip over it, okay? If you insist on having throw rugs, make sure that they're attached firmly, okay? So they're not sliding, but you gotta make sure also that if you're shuffling your feet, you don't wanna catch your toe and trip. So general rule is get rid of the throw rugs. Okay. Um, install easy grab, grab um, on, on your cupboards. You know, not things that you'd have to come in and grab, but things that you can like hook and open. And most closets and doors now, they've got the levers so that you can easily just kind of, you don't have to get little pinching. As, as we see, my, your hands kind of start to get arthritic. So the idea of being able to grab or just push a lever is, is, is a little bit better. Put brighter wattage in all your lamps all your lights. So that'll help with what we, I talked about early on. So when you flick the switch to go into the living room or the dining room, it's bright, okay? Um, put a rheostat on if you like, you know, it's like it's bright in the dining room, you wanna tone it down a little bit, you have a, a rheostat. But for the most part, things are bright. So higher wattage on, um, on lights. Uh, and that night light, hallways, bathroom, kitchen, bottom of the stairs, top of the stairs, okay? Um, they're cheap and they're really good little safety features. So light everywhere, okay? And, that, and bright light won't do it because that'll give you glare. So you need just night lights everywhere, okay? Okay, reflective tape. So if you go outside and you got your stairs, um, our depth perception changes. So things that are the same color look flat. Um, so if they're concrete stairs in the right light, it's gonna look like a ramp. And your brain, even though your brain's saying, you know, I know I, got, I, know I got stairs here but your brain is reading ramp and you might fall down the steps. So um, any hard surface that you can put reflective tape on, yeah, if there's a step down from the you know, dining room to the living room, 
and no, it doesn't look super stylish, but it's better than a broken hip. So on that upper surface, put some sort of demarcation that there is a shift in height so that your brain can go, oh yeah, I see the little strip, I need to step down or I need to step up, okay? So those are cheap, those are inexpensive. Okay, put a chair or a bench where you would, you know, in, in places where you might wanna sit. So at the front door, so you go and shop and you carry some groceries to the, you know, up a few steps. And it's like, you know, I need to put them down. I just, they're heavier than I thought they were. If there's a bench there, you can set them down or you can set yourself down. Same idea, put a little bench or a chair next to the refrigerator or near the refrigerator so that you come home from the grocery store, you wanna stock the grocery, the, the, the uh, refrigerator, you can put the groceries on the chair so you don't have to bend over. And you can, if you got like the little cafe thing, and if you got the lower, the lower um, freezer, you just move the chair and you can move the stuff over. But it's a respite chance for either putting the heavy articles in a place where you can, you don't have to hold them, you just put them in. Or if you wanna sit and like rearrange what's in the bottom freezer, don't bend over and then stand up real fast because there's something called, wait a minute, hydrostatic, wait a minute, hydrostatic, hypertension. So our circulation isn't working quite as well as it has. So the idea of you bending over and standing up fast or lying down and getting out of bed real fast and you kind of go, oh, let me sit here for a minute. Let's sit for a minute and let your blood pressure kind of get a little homeostasis and that'll pass and then you can move. So yeah, you don't want to jump out of bed and start running down the hall because your blood pressure might have different ideas, this hydrostatic hypertension, I have different ideas and you fall in the hall and there's that broken hip again. Avoid those. Um, so same sort of thing, loading, you're bending over a lot, you're moving things and then you stand up real fast. Have something to sit down on. If that, you know, that there's that, you're loading, unloading the refrigerator, okay? So just a little bench at entrances. Um, now I don't, I, what I do have on the list is make sure that your hot water heater is set at a non-boil level, not non-burn. Now, most of the, if you have an old water heater and you've been in your house a while and you've had the good fortune of it like lasting, make sure that if there's a little thermostat on it, that it's not real, real hot. I think it's like 140 is a max. Don't quote me on that though. But the newer uh, hot water heaters, they regulate it because too many people burn themselves. Okay. So that's my list of inexpensive things. The more, uh, the next level up takes a little bit more effort, a little bit more money, but it might make your house safer and you happier, okay? So installing lights in closets. So they've got those ones that you kind of just stick on the inside and it's controlled by if the doors open or closed and when you open it, it goes on, okay? So you don't wanna put heavy stuff above your shoulders, okay? Because when you go reach up, you lean back and our range of motion isn't as good as we get older and you just fall backwards. So you want things that are so clothes are kind of at shoulder level, so that's okay. Anything above that, make sure it's lightweight, like a feather down quilt that you're not using because it's the summertime. You know, something that if it fell on you, doesn't matter. 
stack of books or a, or a, um, a, a box of old um, in in income tax file that are heavy that you want to slide off, it might just slide right into your head. That's not good either. So no heavy stuff on that upper level. Put it down low. Light stuff up, heavy stuff down, okay? Shoes, usually put those in the bottom of your closet. If a shoe fell on you, you wouldn't get hurt. Put your shoes up on that, on that level. You'll be able to see them and put them in a clear box, be able to see your shoes. And if they fall, doesn't make any difference. So think about how you're gonna place things weight-wise, okay? Um, the standard now for light switches are like those little paddles rather than, than um, a little bitty. So if, you're, if you are replacing light switches, they're gonna be things that you can hit with your elbow or your wrist or your fist to make things go on and off, okay? Um, thermostats. Your thermostat should be at almost waist level because you know we got like these bifocals, trifocals and everything. And we need to look down on stuff, okay? And if your thermostat is like high, like the traditional ones are, and you're looking through trifocals to figure out what the temperature is, again, it'll pitch you back if your balance is off even a little bit. It pitches you back. So it's a fall risk. So I think, I think the power company now, they're giving you rebates on uh, new thermostats. So if you got a really old thermostat, use the rebate, you know, get one that's a little bit lower for you. Okay, color contrast between the floor and the wall. There was a time where everything, it'd be monochromatic, okay? So the floor was beige, the wall was beige. Our eyeballs, they, they need contrast. As we get older, you need contrast. So people were walking right into the wall because they were looking at it and looking and it's like, it's the same color. It must be the same level and walking into stuff, walking into walls. Also, your countertop and your floor in your kitchen are the same color. You don't know where the countertop ends and the floor begins. So make sure you got contrasting color so you got a white countertop, you got a black, you know, whatever. That it's that you can, there's no guesswork over where the countertop ends and the floor is. Okay. So you're not like putting stuff in air because it's all the same color and you're breaking stuff. It's not good. Um okay. Back to the eyes again with a little bitty opening of the pupil, it encourages glare. So the idea of really shiny floors. My mom used to wax floors. I'm glad those days are over. But you know, the idea of if you have a really shiny floor, the sun hits it, it bounces off light. Um, TV screen, you know, light comes in and if the TV's off, it kind of bounces. Um, anytime there's a glare, know that the light goes in that little bitty hole and bounces around in there and you can't see anything. So the idea of you want, always have sunglasses. But with these guys, I go outside and they automatically go dark. So I don't have to worry about two pairs of glasses. They cost as much as two pairs, but they're in one. But that cuts down on glare. Um, so just be aware around your house where there might be that kind of extra light stimulation. And you need to, you know, like put um, uh, shades down or put a, um, like a little see-through gauzy sort of covering over. So it breaks up glare and doesn't, um, you know, just because every glare, it just, it seems to like just aim at your eyeballs. So 
um, non-glare. So paint, not glossy paint, matte finish, because glossy painted walls can, can glare too. So matte finish on flooring and paints and surfaces, okay? And task lighting, what we talked about is under the cover, under the counter. So there's light right on your task. Or if you're reading that you have a lamp that's specific for reading, if you're doing any sort of like woodwork or a hobby, make sure it's task lighting. There's lighting to it so you're not strained, straining your eyes. Um, seating should be 18 inches off the floor. So traditional dining room chairs are a little bit higher. So they're about 18 inches and that will, you know, no soft sofas where you get down and you can't get out um, or you have to struggle to get out. Uh, you go to visit somebody, go for the dining room chair, you know, just um, it will be ergonomically sound and, and it will be um, supportive to your back and easy for you to get up and out. So 18 inches. Um, Front loading washer and dryer, um, if that's a little bit more expensive, uh, but the idea of reaching down into a washing machine, um, if it's a big honker washing machine, it cannot be, you know, there's issues. I got an, an over, you know, a stack, and that's great because then I, I, I can, the lighter stuff, so the drying, um, is, is shoulder level, okay. Bit more planning, um, one floor living. If you're looking at downsizing, one floor living. Um, no, not more than one step to get in and out of the house. 36 inch doorways so that it can be um, wheelchair accessible. If you need that, you might not have to, but you might. Um, easy garage or parking access so that it's not like a long walk to get into where you're going. And if it is a longer walk, you make sure you got the benches where you need to maybe rest a little bit or put your stuff down. So low threshold bathroom and shower, you're redoing a bathroom with 36 inch wide doors. Um, Okay, and that'll make it wheelchair or um, walker accessible, the bathroom. Okay, so not to blame the house, in conclusion, be aware of your surroundings. So make sure you got lighting outside, you got lighting inside, you, you know, you turn the light on, the outside light on when you leave, even if it's the middle of the day, if you know you're coming back after dark. I have little lights along the sidewalk. They're on a um, sensor so that when the light starts to go past a certain step, they automatically come on. And in the morning when the sun comes up, they automatically go off. So I know they're always gonna be there. As long as I pay my electric bill, they'll be there when I come and go, okay? So outdoor lighting is really, really good. Okay, keep up on your eye health, so your, your eye and hearing annuals, or if they want to see you more, see them more. Point being, when your hearing and your eyes are not where they should be, it doesn't stimulate your brain. And a brain that's not stimulated fails. It's really important to have, to let go of any pride. And if they say get hearing aids, get hearing aids. If you need stronger glasses, get stronger glasses because your brain needs to be stimulated. Pride gets in the way, you can't hear, you can't see well, your brain's gonna go substandard. Keep up with those, those evaluations. Review your medicine. Our gut works differently as we age. If you say, you know, I've been on this one medicine for the last 40 years, it's the same dose, you need to have it reviewed. 
because you may or may not need it anymore, or your gut might not be absorbing it as much. So ask questions when you go in for your annual about your medicine. Exercise daily, okay? If you can't get up and walk, walking's the best. You want to think of strength, flexibility, and endurance. And anything you do, you should bring in two of those, strength, flexibility, endurance. Walking does all of them. Walk from to the post office, I mean, to the, the your, your post box, um, you start there. You know, what is your, what is your normal? What is your, where are you now? Don't compare yourself to 20 years ago. Where are you now, okay? If you can sing, you're not doing enough. If you are a little out of breath, you can talk if you're walking with somebody and you can kind of carry on a conversation, but you're a little out of breath, that's good. If you cannot breathe, stop, okay? So if you're in a townhouse and you get up to the right, the first riser before you have to switch and you, you're not breathing real well, that's where you should have a little chair to sit down, okay? You need to be able to talk when you're doing an activity. So it's like, oh no, I've always been able to like take the 40 pounds of mulch out of the back of the trunk and walk it across the yard to the garden. If you can't breathe, don't do that anymore. Too much pressure on your heart, okay? Um, yeah, don't put yourself at risk. You know, if you need a cane, use it. It'll keep you alive longer because You'll be sharing the load. You'll be able to get around. Um, again, you don't want to fall. Um, shoes should not be cumbersome. For a while, they had you know like these really thick sole things. You know, um, no, you shouldn't feel like you're walking with weights on your feet. You want good support. Flip flops aren't going to do it. Um, Little, you know, slip, little slide your shoes, your feet in. Probably not. Um, but yeah, do not shuffle. Shuffle now, fall later. Don't shuffle. You pick up your feet. If you can hear yourself walking down the hall, you're shuffling. So practice walking a little bit more. Do some sit in your chair and do some. You know, just range of motion with your arms. Just, you know, a little bit of motion, okay? But with all of it, got medical stuff going on, check with a physical therapist. In the Commonwealth of Virginia, you can see most physical therapists without seeing a doctor first. And if they go, you know, we probably need to do a little bit more work. Well, why don't you check in with your, your primary care physician, get a prescription. Insurance will pay for it. Have any, you know, see a PT, see a physical therapist. I can tell you from experience, we're good people. And we got, um, we're the, we're the um, experts on movement. Get hands down. Okay. So that's all I have. So Andrea, do we have questions from our, from our people? Um, I, some people did send me some questions ahead of time, so I will go ahead and start with those. Um, okay. if any of you have had, uh, some questions, uh, arise from, uh, the wonderful presentation we just heard, um, you can share them in the chat. You can share them privately. If you set it to, uh, be received by hosts and panelists, if you want the whole group to see, you can make sure that everyone is getting uh, a, that you select everyone, or you can also put it in the Q&A, and in the Q&A, it is visible to everyone. So whatever you prefer, um, you can share those questions with us, and I will go ahead and get started. Um, feeds, okay. 
Okay, Sylvia has a couple of great questions. Um, and um, I don't know if this is outside of your purview or not, but we'll go ahead and ask them. Um, how do you go about finding women help? Oh. Hmm. Google. <laughs> um, there are, it depends on what level, you know? Um, if it is with medical care, uh, there are agencies that do, you know, I think there's one like stay at home, um, home first. Um, it's, it's Googling, you know, putting in search words, um, going through your place of worship. Um, if there are, there may be people, there may be someone that is retired that would, you know, welcome it. Um, you know, a widow that, you know, a recent widow that might say, you know, yeah, I can help. Um, but I, um, George Mason has a, it's called career, it has a career center and it's jobs gmu.edu i don't know if the institution companies they advertise um so it's you know it, it would be like new graduates but you might get a a, a master student who's looking for part time who knows but google your church um if you're in a smaller town, you know, the, the city, city hall might have a job, uh, job, job board. Um, used to be that you could go into this, into this, you know, the grocery store and there'd be a job, a job board that people would, you know, just take phone numbers off and call. But I, I'm 18, I'm dating myself. Okay, uh, next how, how do you find someone to make nutritious meals? How to make them or how to find somebody? Um, it says make, but um, if there's like a similar agency that'll do that. Um, meals is Meals on Wheels. I mean, the idea of, of having food brought um, if somebody can't cook, it the, the Meals on Wheels is a really good um, possibility. And in this area, they even have units that cater to different um, nationalities. So there's like a Korean Meals on Wheels. There is a Spanish, Hispanic, Latino Meals on Wheels. Um, but the idea of getting recipes, again, you Google them. You know, you, you look to see what ingredients do I have? And you put in the different ingredients and then just put, you know, like low fat or healthy and you press the button and you get a choice of different recipes. So that's the easy way, I believe, to do that. Okay, next. And Coral also mentions um, that the city of Alexandria has an office of aging. Um, I can include that in the chat. And then um, depending on where everyone in the audience is, um, you know, maybe that, that's an option in your, your local office on aging as well. It's, it, nationally, it's called the Area Agency on Aging. So if you put that in the Google search and then you put in your zip code, your most local one should come up, Area Agency on Aging. And I have this link. Yeah, I'll put this link in the chat. And this one addresses elder care specifically. Um, Perfect. Uh, let's see. Next question. Um, this may, and then this may answer the next question, but if, 
if there is an agency or social workers to help when you are too tired to do this for yourself, uh, who can be an advocate for you if you don't have family around to assist you? Area Agency on Aging. Okay. Yeah. Then when should you start preparing when you get ill? It seems like you've waited too long. Of course, we don't have a crystal ball. We do the best we can, but we do not want to be a burden. It causes a lot of anxiety. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at your, your personal picture, okay? So if you are in the house that you raised your five kids in and you've been there for 40 years, 50 years, um, there's no time like the present, okay? And there's a, there's a lot on decluttering now, but, or downsizing. Again, Area Agency on Aging should have some resources of people that could actually help you. Um, Fairfax has a, a little, I'm in Fairfax County, so they've got a little periodical that comes out once a month that's called the Golden Gazette. And there's lots of people that advertise in that for like downsizing. Um, but it's, you know, thinking ahead, I, I downsized from my big house to a smaller townhouse four years ago. So when I hit like 63, 64, it was like, nah, I want to work until I'm 70s. But I figured, you know, I got, I got rid of a boatload of stuff because I got the house and I went the townhouse and I went, okay. I'm only moving what will fit in the townhouse, nothing in the attic, Christmas ornaments only in the basement, everything else goes. It was so, it was like a huge burden came off. So what I have in my townhouse are the things that I really like. I occasionally miss something, but it's only a thing. But I figured I'm closer to where I'm not going to be a burden on my kid because I got rid of probably two thirds of everything I owned. Okay. That was so, so cool. So now if I go to buy something, it's like, I have to get rid of something if I'm going to bring something in. And that's harder. That's very hard. to do. So um, yeah, now's the time. If you're 60, it's time. Um, yeah, that's just one person's opinion. Uh, it's funny that you bring that up because there is a book out there called The Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning. And the author's conceit is kind of the same thing. It's, um, let me get rid of my things and downsize now so that when I die, my kids don't have to do too much at that point. Yeah, when my parents died, my brother, God bless him, he's still got stuff. And they've been gone for 20 years. He can't let go of it. And it's like, no, there's going to be somebody else in the world that will love it as much as you did. So, and, and, and I did my annual review at work. And so my plan is, God willing, I work until I'm 70. I told my boss, you got five semesters. So I'm telling you, we got to start with a plan so that I'm not throwing anybody under the bus that my what I do, I can train somebody and they can take what they want or not, but at least there's an effort of not saying, bye, good luck. No. So the idea, you got to have a plan. Without okay. a plan, nothing's going to happen. Okay. And Thank then you. finally, um, related question, uh, we want to age in place, um, but is there a time when we should give up the house? I'm not sure if that means like downsizing or if that means um, considering assisted living or a nursing home. Well, okay. The average age now of people just kind of calling it, calling it is 85. So you're healthy, 85. There's a time when our body goes from being a senior to a fragile senior. So skin becomes more delicate, the bones become more delicate, we just become more delicate. And movement and agility, everybody's different. I mean, everybody's different. So 
Um, you can't say for sure, but there will be, I mean, I've had experience of family and patients of going, you know, I was doing fine until last week. And I told my kids, I'm moving out of the house. There's, there's like this, wow. You know, it's, it's almost like innate that you go, nope, it's time. Um, I mean, you can anticipate, but if you don't, you know, if you, it's like your body goes, I need, I need a little extra assist. And sometimes as a couple, you can kind of cover for each other for a while, but at some point, you know, if one fails a little bit more, the healthier one might go, we, I need help. Because often it's the caregiver that dies before the person who's actually ill. And if you can, you know, it's like, again, pride of going, you know, I need help. I just need help. Um, you'll know. And, and, and that it's okay. There's no, we didn't get a user's guide, you know? And everybody's different. And so you need to trust yourself, be brave, trust yourself and, um, and go with that. And just know it's fine. Whatever you decide is fine. Everybody else, they'll figure it out. What's going on with you, okay? Okay, Lyndon wants to know, what about doors? I live in an old house and the bathroom door opens into the bathroom. So if I were to fall, I would not be able to get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you live by yourself? If you live by yourself, take the door off. You're afraid of falling in the bathroom. If you're at that stage and you're living by yourself, take the door off. Um, because even if it opened out into the hall, that might be a safety hazard as well. But that's my gut reaction. Take it off. Okay. All right. Put a shower curtain up, you know? So at least there's a little bit of privacy. Have somebody come in and get the, you know, you got, you got the pressure cords, things, little things. Little pressure thing, little, little, shower curtain fall into the shower curtain it's okay you just put it back up okay and what about using a lifeline support for falls or one of the connections to 911 where your information is on file are those useful to sign up for you live by yourself and you at a risk of falling yes and like in fairfax county they've got these little red things that go in your refrigerator. That's all your life. It's like a lifeline support sort of idea. So it's got your name, it's got your contacts, it's got your doctors. So if the fire department was called because you fell and you can't get up, they usually go to the refrigerator to see if there's one. And maybe you fell and hit your head and you're not, you know, you're kind of groggy. You're not a good historian. That's there. So they say sometimes to put it in a freezer Mine's on my refrigerator. Um, but yeah, no, if you live by yourself and you have fallen twice in the last year, that's usually the, the, the fall risk thing. If you have fallen twice in this past year and that's available to you and it's something you think you've been thinking about, like, ah, oh, that might be a good idea. Do it. If you haven't thought of it at all, you know, but it's the idea of moving out of your house. If you've been ruminating on it and going, should I or shouldn't I, just do it. Whatever it is, as long as it's legal, socially acceptable, and won't hurt anyone. Those are my rules for my students when they write papers, when they do experiments. So those that socially acceptable, doesn't hurt anybody, and it's legal. You're pretty safe. Next. Uh, Lee says, regarding the bathroom door question, there are also pocket doors that could be installed. Mm -hmm. 
depending on what's on either side. And if you got the laundry, you know, a hall closet on one side and bedroom, you know, it, pocket doors are great. Yes to that. Pocket doors are great. And, and you can want, you elaborate on what pocket doors are? Oh, okay. So what a pocket door is, is when there's lots of, I, I put one in like going from my front door area to my kitchen in my old house. So it is a slider and it slides into the wall. So if you look at a regular oh. door, it's got the door frame around where the door fits into this little mm -hmm, mm -hmm. housing. So in a pocket door, that housing on one side is open. And so the door, you kind of grab the little handle and you push the whole door into the wall. And um, in old, you know, like uh, 19th century houses where they had, you know, the, the separate the dining room and the, excuse me, living room, they had pocket doors that they just kind of opened. And it was mainly because of heat, I believe, that you had, you wanted to keep the heat contained because there wasn't central heating. So you had doors in between all the rooms and they were usually pocket doors. Mm, okay. I, 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 okay. I know, I now I know what you're talking about. I just didn't know they were called pocket doors. I love pocket doors. I adore pocket doors, especially, you know, I put one in every place that I could. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, does anyone else have any more questions for um, Dr. Winter? Yeah, if you're going to do a pocket door, have somebody that knows how to do it. Because I had one guy didn't know how to do it, and I had to have it replaced twice. Finally found somebody who could do it, and it was gorgeous. It was just a white door, but I mean, it worked so well. Okay. Don't see any more questions, um, but. Oh, Lyndon says, I hope there can be additional talks by Dr. Winter. Sure. I've got like five that I do for um, Mason. Uh, can you uh, tell us uh, a little bit about some of the, the other topics that you? Most of them are like the aging in place thing. So I, you know, one of them is, you know, shuffle now, fall later is one of the talks. Okay. Um, I got one on sitting at your desk and other hazardous duties. Um, I've, one that I've only given a couple times is on volunteerism keeping you young so yeah volunteering is a good thing um and oh, joints joint health aging well and joint health and that's all i can remember because i have an old brain and it's the end of the day and you're my seventh, <laughs> seventh zoom today you are a true hero i appreciate you. your 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 time with us today um Let's see, Karen said, Sylvia says, thank you. And uh, Karen also says, thank you very much. Would love to hear you speak again. And the volunteerism and the joint health sound great. Okay, so that's Andrea's job. <laughs> we'll definitely um, see if we can uh, arrange something with the library. Um, uh, sp and speaking of which, I'll go ahead and plug some of our, if you enjoyed this program, we have plenty of other programs. Um, out there um, online for book clubs and talks like Dr. Winters and everything in between. We are dabbling in some outdoor programming now in our reading garden. Um, so I'll go ahead and put in a plug. We've got a small fall festival on Saturday. Um, we'll have um, crafts, games, a cooking demonstration, storytelling, book sale, and more. So we'll have storytelling. If any of you are fans of Cooking with Cole, we'll have a live Cooking with Cole at one o'clock and then we'll have garden games for the family. Um, the book sale is gonna be inside. And of course, anytime you're in the library, you will need a mask and then take and make crafts for kids um, will be available. So I'm gonna put that in the chat as well. And um, with that, um, I'll uh, 
say thank you. Thank you again, Dr. Winter, for um, sharing your knowledge with us and spending your evening with us. My pleasure. I hope you all have a fantastic tomorrow. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.